So do you remember when we were children, we could get lost for hours in our imaginations, dreaming up new worlds, roles, and experiences? I grew up in Colorado as an only child, and I used to line all my toys up in my closet and create infinite worlds and experiences. The living room used to become a lava field, and my friends and I would jump from the furniture and not touch the ground because we might burn our feet. I would become a dinosaur to eat trees in order to finish my broccoli. <laughs> and I saw the world as an infinite and beautiful place. One day, my mother told me that a darkness filled the world. And she urged me not to grow up too fast, because as an adult, I would see the truth. And I laughed at her, because I thought how ridiculous that sounded. I already had experienced the truth, that the world was an infinite and beautiful place. And as an adult, I could play in that playground even more fully and enjoy myself in ways that were way beyond the freedom that I had as a little girl. It wasn't until I skinned my knee on the playground and one of my friends was teased for wearing glasses that I realized something wasn't right. The connection to my imagination as I grew into adult began to fade and slowly that darkness started to creep in. That's when I realized that my mother was right. That the world was a place filled with darkness that light alone could not overcome. I learned of unimaginable suffering and torture and vast systems that perpetuate that suffering, the poverty and the illness that we see as adults. I used to take my toys from house to house as I moved as an adult. And they always sat in a box or up on the top shelf. And one day, I pulled down one of my toys. And that day, I stumbled across my childlike imagination that had been lost as I grew into an adult. That's the day that play became a healthy way for me to cope with the truth and the darkness that I had found as an adult. And the darkness itself became a journey to, that was filled with imagination and fun, even. And it was that day that I transformed my life into a game. I gamified everything. I gamified my pain. I gamified my goals. I gamified my relationships. I gamified my personal development and my spiritual path. I even questioned how to gamify the world's greatest problems and how to overcome them. And what I discovered was a story that is so filled with magic that it can transform anything that is gamified. And today we call that game the Presentville Game. We transform communities through fundraising, outreach, and nonprofit organizations. And today we're going to talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to start with some examples of how gamification is used in the real world. Google had, uh, had a problem with their employees submitting information about their travel expenses. They gamified the process, and the employees could choose where any remaining money went. It could be rolled into their next paycheck, it could be saved for another trip, or it could be donated to a charity of their choice. And in six months, they saw 100% compliance with the program. The ice bucket challenge is another fantastic way that gamification has created tremendous impact. Most of us probably didn't know what the ALS Foundation was, but that single campaign went viral and raised over $115 million and raised awareness for their cause. Today I'm going to talk about three ways to gamify nonprofit outreach, education, and fundraising. The first is with the use of an avatar and storytelling. The second is with 
virtual reality or augmented reality, and lastly, using blockchain technology. I'm not going to be able to go into all the details about all of these, but we'll touch on each of them briefly. So I wanted to go into a couple examples of how cartoons and characters have been used in the 20th century. Many of you probably know Smokey the Bear. I come from Colorado, so we see him everywhere. He was created in 1942 in order to help educate the public about forest fires and how to prevent forest fires. <coughs> Many of you probably know Tony the Tiger, who was created to help sell cereal. He was created in 1952 by Kellogg's. And in both of these cases, you can see that they have had a lasting impact on our world. Their household names, we all know them. So in both of these cases, marketing teams created these avatars. And something really magical happens when instead of a marketing team who's trying to sell cereal or educate the public, when a grassroots community creates an avatar to change the world. In 2009, I created a process. To, this process is, is used in communities all around the world. I travel to five different continents using this process and bring toys into a community in order to create an avatar that the community assigns features itself. So the toy travels from person to person in uh, interview setting, so we film everything on film, and in the process, the toy's story naturally emerges. And this is a way to research and name and create solutions to any problems that the community may be facing themselves. In my approach, the toy or stuffed animal moves from hand to hand, and a story with the community's words and natural creativity emerges. <coughs> and from that, we create an avatar. So somebody within the community will eventually become a brave soul to put on the costume and tell the story firsthand. I'm going to share a quick video about Presentville and how it came to be, so you can get a little sense of this process. Presentville really started with in the slums of Argentina, exploring play with a whole bunch of toys and kids, and has grown to hundreds of players around the world. The kind of mythos, as I see it, of this game is that the intergalactic council has sent sea seats from the future through a projection portal to welcome this very important group of human beings who have been chosen to help ignite or initiate a transformation so Presentville and all of the other dimensions where players enter into an alternative version of the universe that actually still maps on to this world. In every realm, whether it's their school or their work or their play, we have now a persistent virtual layer that's accessible to any player, to any device, anywhere in the world. Some layers of that may be geographical, like linked to the Earth's physical places. Some layers might be abstract other dimensions. Yeah. That's happening right now. The edges can blend where you become homeless and then you become a homeless bear. And you're telling a story not only for yourself, but a whole community of homeless people. Your small part of the story can then gain impact for a whole population. And that's where it becomes really addictive is when you start to see what you're doing is actually creating benefit in the world. And you're seeing real world results that somebody is getting a house because they played Sammy the homeless bear, and then a fundraising campaign happened, and then the money was raised, and then they have a home and they've overcome it, and we've proven one system for creating benefit for one individual that then can then be passed on to another individual. We're basically calling all hands, all world healers, come play this. As a child, you have access to infinite possibility. The world is your oyster. You can be anything you want at any moment. And nothing has changed now that we're adults other than that we forgot to use our imagination. So hopefully you can hear that. 
has turned all the way up. So in Presentville, we create these avatars and then we upload them into a virtual world. For many of you who have, been, have never been into virtual reality, this is what a headset looks like. When you put the headset on, this world completely disappears and you're immersed in new worlds where you can interact and manipulate what you're experiencing. You can also use this with augmented reality, which is a little different. It's more like sunglasses or a regular set of glasses. And you overlay the digital world on top of this world. And I know we're going to be seeing this more and more as time goes on. So this becomes a really wonderful way for clients and donors and nonprofits and the staff to actually step inside the storyline and imagine the impact. In this, in this video, we have an actual player walking into an animated world. But imagine the impact of walking down a war-torn city from the comfort of your own home. It's going to be much more impactful than if you heard it from a friend or watched a video of it. I'm going to touch briefly on blockchain. Blockchain technology becomes a vessel to tell a story and distribute it into a distributed network that is verifiable and transparent. And with any game, you want to be able to make sure everyone's playing by the rules. So that's how we do this in Presentville. We can keep track of players and their actions within the game using blockchain. And we can also track the resources that are coming in and out of the game using blockchain. This is Global Peace Train. This train is actually a toy, but it's blown up into uh, the real world. And you can see this, this train in some of our live art shows. You'll see it either in a small version or in a big version in some of the digital worlds. And I love how we can move from kind of toy into the real world and start navigating through our imagination and connecting to our childlike imagination in this way. So Global Peace Train is the dis distribution network for the Present Bill game. It is a nonprofit organization that we use to move these resources about <coughs> the communities that we're working with. So this is Sammy Bear, and I want to share a little bit of this avatar. He was created in 2010 by a player in the UK. This toy, it started out as a pretty big toy, and it was the gentleman's favorite toy growing up, and he had carried it all the way into his adult life. And he donated it into the project to start to address homelessness and affordable housing. And his name was Sammy Bear. We, talk, we took the bear across the US, researching with individuals doing, um, doing interviews on film with people who are homeless and people who are affected by homelessness, to start to look at what it means, and what some solutions to the problem could be. And eventually, one of our brave players in Colorado cut the bear up, turned it into a costume, and became Sammy Bear himself. And now, Sammy Bear has been played by many different characters who are either homeless or exploring homelessness from a point of view of art. And so we have these live art shows where people actually come into the art shows and can put on the costume and feel what it might feel like to panhandle within the art show. It's a great way to create empathy. We also encourage all of our characters who are part of a Sammy Bear team or who are playing Sammy Bear to work on the actual homes that we've created. So we use this avatar recently in fundraising for affordable housing in Boulder, Colorado. It's but similar to California, quite expensive. And the results have been quite shocking. We were able to raise over $68,000 and create and buy a home for a senior who is homeless. And since then, that home has also created housing for six other adults, as well as the caretakers who came into the house the home to help the senior in and out of the hospital and then reintegrate into society. And in the process, so there were also four animals who have enjoyed the home. And that's been in the last two years. So now we're working on the second home. Actually, 
The first prototype is here in California, a couple hours north up in Kelseyville. And the initial home we finished, it's about 70 square feet. And we were using a very special, um, we're, we're using a material mostly made out of air. And it's called aircrete. You take pour cement and then you mix it with air that is made out of air bubbles just from ordinary soap. And it becomes quite light and a very sustainable and affordable building material. So this was our first, and we learned a lot, obviously, when we were doing this, and we're now working on the large home. We'll soon be doing an art show where you can come in, and you'll see the front door of the home, and then you'll enter into augmented reality in order to walk around the digital version of the home. That will help us put the fundraising for the full-size home, as well as the documentary about this. So, I want to take this opportunity to create a new avatar with everyone here so you can get a sense of how this process works. We're just going to do it for a few minutes. This is your opportunity to leap outside of yourself. A lot of people are really uncomfortable when I ask them, okay, let's like pull in our childlike imagination. And as adults, they're like, ugh, I don't know what to do. So it's really simple. Um, remember those poems we used to write? As kids, you put one line of the poem down, and then you pass the paper, and someone else puts the other line, and someone else, and someone else. So we're going to do something similar with this avatar. This stuffed animal was actually created by one of the um, communities we work with in Kenya. And it was handmade by a woman over there. And I thought it would be very appropriate to start this one with you all tonight. So let's just start by throwing out names. Anybody can share any names, and I'll pick one that feels like it fits with this little guy. Who wants to start? Piero. Keo? Piero. Piero. Okay, who else? <laughs> Let's hear some others. Philo. What? Philo. Philo. Any, anyone else? Fred. Fred. Leo. Leo. <laughs> you think it's a girl? What, uh, what name would you give it? Julie. Ooh. The one, that, the one that stuck out to me was Philo. That just like, when I heard it, it just went, yes, that's its name. So now, uh, were you the gentleman that came up with Philo? Okay. So now, we're, we're going to throw out how, what topic or what issue in the world this avatar could help solve. It could be anything, really. And we have a whole bunch of avatars that already cover things like homelessness and some other ones. But if we can all throw out some big problems that we're facing in the world that this little avatar may one day be able to help us solve. And then you'll be able to choose which one really resonates with you. And I'll make sure it's one that we don't already have an avatar for. So, All right, who wants to throw out a problem? Plastic waste. Plastic waste. Depression. Depression. Ebola. Ebola. Anyone else? Cancer. Cancer. Our president. <laughs> Our president. <laughs> Anyone else? Refugees. Refugees. Do any of those, sir, really kind of resonate with you as like a yes? That's a problem that we need to work on. Plastic waste. Plastic waste. <laughs> well, who, who chose plastic waste? I forgot. Was that you? Yes. Okay. So now you're going to do the same thing. You're going to get to choose what kind of resonates with you. Okay, so we're going to say this is Philo that works on plastic waste and is our teacher about plastic waste. Okay, and so now let's talk about superpowers. If this avatar is going to have a superpower that's going to help with plastic waste, what is it going to be? So let's throw out a few. So first of all, what is it made of? <laughs> Good question. You know, I haven't tested this material, but probably there's some sort of form of plastic inside. Well, what's that? I know we're hitting some nerves. That's good. You know, things are working real well when you're hitting the nerves. So, so we're gonna decide now. Okay, what superpower this? avatar would have in order to 
overcome the problem of plastic waste. So some, some people turns plastic waste into lilies. Turns plastic waste into lilies. Is that right? Okay. What else? Time travel. Time travel. Great. What else? Well, maybe you only have two to choose from. Unless anybody else has an idea. Turns home turns plastic waste into homes for refugees. Turns <laughs> <laughs> plastic waste into homes for refugees. <laughs> Great. Do any of those resonate with you, or do you want some more? Uh, maybe. Can. Uh, can eat plastic. Can we like can do molecular level or atomic level of reorganization of plastic waves and uh, waste and then form them into a kind of home for homeless people, refugees, and everyone? Okay. So one day you all might run into this character in full costume. Who knows? And it may be helping us overcome the plastic waste problem by producing homes for refugees. So. Keep a look out for Philo here in the future. And uh, <laughs> I think that's enough for tonight. So I'm glad we all got to share this experience. And thank you very much.